Well, at this point, Churchill sends in his good friend, Archibald uh, Label, Lavelle. He was a commander of the British forces in the Middle East, and he was sent directly to this place in Africa where the British were dug in. That is, it's photographed if you're interested. And you don't hear much about him, but boy, he was a very, very competent commander. Did a lot of good for the British in, the, in uh, many different areas. Okay, so Walvo takes the offense. And uh, in December of 1940, to the middle of, to the, uh, almost the middle of February, he engages in what he calls Operation Compass. And what he did, this is where he started from. And there's that circle around those encampments. And this is where he went up through that 20 mile gap in the middle of the night and kind of came in behind on the Germans. And the German, or the Italians, I'm sorry, you can see these little stars. That's basically the encampments of the uh, Italians. The Italians were completely surprised. They were sure that they were so severely outnumbered, they just gave up in wholesale lots. But the fact was, they weren't outnumbered. The British were outnumbered. But the surprise was so great that the British carried it through. In that battle, the Italians lost 10,000 killed. They lost 130,000 taken prisoner. And the uh, British did that with just losing, arriving 2,000 casualties. That's how offside of that battle was. And it's interesting, though, look at this. Anthony Eden, who was Britain's Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs. Remember when uh, Churchill said to the defenders of uh, Britain, never has so much been owed to so few by so many, indicating he was praising the RAF. Look at the paraphrase Anthony Eden gave. Never has so much been surrendered by so many to so few. <laughs> so it was really lopsided. Okay. Then in January of 41, uh, uh, the Aussies put, uh, under and the British, they push uh, uh, the uh, Italians all the way back to the left of this particular map. And uh, at the same time they're doing that, Hitler has realized whether Mussolini wants them or not. Mussolini was probably glad to get him by that time. He said, he said I've got to help him out. So that's when the African Corps entered the scene at Tripoli. They came into Tripoli, disembarked on the 14th of February. And immediately, almost immediately, in terms of that amount of time, with that kind of a force, it was pretty immediate. Uh, he, does, he starts his first offense. He first raided at uh, Alagea, and he took troops. He got Italian and German, and they start up the road this way, and they start going across the country that way. He splits his force. And the first place they take is Benghazi, huge supply of British uh, equipment they pick up there. And the troops that came overland, almost overnight, they're right outside of Tobruk. But we all know they didn't take Tobruk. That just shows that Tobruk became a, it, it was a siege, we all know that. There was a siege of Tobruk then for the next eight months before that siege was lifted. Anyway, uh, well, Val, he's off here to the right now. But he's been pushed back by Rommel again. He's back toward uh, Mesa Maru. And Laval starts Operation uh, Brevity, I'm sorry, Operation Brevity. And the purpose of that operation was to set up a base close to the front lines that would be a base for him to relieve Tobruk. But the Germans uh, uh, didn't fold. He didn't get it done. So he started another one, almost in the same place, called Battle Axe, right under it. He tried to marshal his troops there as a base for launching attacks that were going to relieve the siege of Tobruk, but it didn't work. And at that point, Churchill said, well, attack anyway. Don't go on a defense. Attack, attack. Keep going. 
Rovell said, I want to get you guys killed. I ain't going to do it. So he was sacked. Churchill got rid of him. And that's the first time we see oh, a Chinelec, a Chinelec in July of that year. And if you're, if you're interested in what he looked like, that, uh, that is a Chinelec. And he starts on November 18th, his first operation called Crusader. And that is a terrible, horrendous operation. The forces go back and forth. We've seen so much of that. But the British do link up with the book on November 27th. So the, the attack went so well. Over here to the right, that last circle, excuse me, to the left, that's Alagia. Alagia. Uh, he pushes Rommel all the way back. So he's right back where he started from. So he's getting back and forth. As you see by the arrow, it pushes him all the way back. A uh, little bit of uh, what the Germans brought to the battle. Uh, you see, I know the uh, ME 109s, and you've seen the Focky Wolf, the FWS, and the Stuka. Probably more Stukas saw action in Africa than any other German plane. You know, the Stuka had a siren hooked to the bottom of the wing, one of these air sirens. So when they would go into a steep dive, the air rushing into that would make that horrendous screaming siren noise. And it, was, it just it scared more people to death, I think, than the bombs killed them. But they were noted for that. Anyway, the 88. Everybody's heard of the 88 millimeter guns. Uh, the, the Allies never had a tank, never, that could withstand uh, being hit by an 88 millimeter. The Mark III's, the Panzers, we all know about Panzers, quickly. Uh, the Panzer Mark III and a Mark II were the main stay of the tanks in uh, Africa for the Germans. This is just another Mark III. I put this in because it's, I've had that picture for a long time. That's Rommel's Jeep. Rommel always wanted a Jeep, but he could never get one. Or maybe he didn't want to have one. Or they wouldn't let him have one, put it that way. So anyway, this is a recon car the Germans were using in Africa. And that is Rommel standing right in the middle of it. And believe it or not, there were some Tiger Ones that eventually got into that battle. And the major thing they probably brought to, in terms of what did they bring to the battlefield, they brought Rommel. Okay, so now we got the people entrenched again. A lot of that. Germans over here, the British over here. And Rommel attacks again on the 21st of January. Back over the same ground again. He starts there, and uh, on February the 4th, he reaches that line right there. That's where the British had put in a defensive line. And uh, <clears throat> he stops his defensive at that point, and they go back into the mode of supplies. Uh, I've read accounts, you probably have too, that supplies or the lack of supplies defeated uh, the, the uh, Axis more than anything else. The lack of supplies was horrendous. And again, keep in mind, all they needed, so many. And here's Hitler trying to keep them going, trying to get stuff for the Balkans. Now he's got Crete that he's invading. He's got the Greece that he's fighting now. And he's got Barbarossa. I mean, he's just all over the place. He's trying to satisfy everybody. No sympathy for him, but you begin to understand the magnitude of his problems. 